Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through the most basic rules of calculus. So calculus is a huge topic and the video isn't going to be a complete treatment of the topic, but I hope that it will help, especially if differentiation is new to you and if you're feeling overwhelmed. This video is targeted towards students of economics, since my channel is about economics, though of course if you're not studying economics but think that the video will be helpful, please feel free to watch and welcome to the channel. So the big rule to note is this one here. Let's say we have some function such that y is a function of the variable x. If the functional form is such that y is equal to a times x to the power of n, where a is just a coefficient on the variable x and n is an exponent, then the derivative of the function, which I will notate dy dx, is equal to we bring the exponent out the front, so n times a times x to the power of, and we take one off the exponent, so n minus one. If your function is almost in this form, but there is no coefficient on the variable, so no a, the rule still works. We can just think about it as if a is equal to one, and you would apply the rule with this in mind. It's worth noting that dy dx might be notated y prime or y prime x. There is actually a few different notations out there. I think that these ones are the main ones. If you're confused at all about the notation, it's best to ask your teacher directly. So just to give an example, if we had the function y is equal to 4x to the power of 3, then in translating our rule, a is equal to 4 and n is equal to 3. So the derivative of this function, dy dx, we take n out the front, so that would be 3, which multiplies 4, since a is equal to 4, and then we have x, and then we take 1 off from the exponent. So it all reduces down to, well, 3 times 4, so 12 times x to the power of, and then 3 minus 1 is 2. So just in my notation here, I should add that the dot here indicates multiplication. I've just used this notation because I'm using the variable x and it looks like the multiplication sign. So dots are multiplication here. So that's the big rule. It might seem a little restrictive, but there are a couple of other rules that are important and will help us make this rule really applicable to a wider range of functions. The first one is that the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So I'm not going to explain here, but this is basically because when we take the derivative, we think about the slope of a function and constants have zero slope. So if your function is such that y is equal to c, where c is some constant, then dy dx is equal to zero. So I'll put that rule over here. The next rule is that the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, and this also works with subtraction. You might see it like this, so y, the function y, is equal to g of x plus h of x, in which case dy dx is just going to be equal to dg dx dh dx. This might seem really weird and confusing, but all it means is that if we have a function where we have terms adding up together, let's say y is equal to 3 plus 2x to the power of 4, then to take the derivative of our function y with respect to x, we're just going to take the derivative of this first term here, so 3, and then the derivative of the term 2x to the power of 4, and add those up. We know from our previous rule that the derivative of a constant is equal to 0, so the first derivative of 3 here will just be equal to 0, plus we're going to take the derivative of 2x to the power of 4, and to do this we're going to use the initial rule that I started with. So we take 4, which is the exponent out the front, multiplied by 2 times by our variable x, and then 4 minus 1, we're taking 1 off the exponent. So this all simplifies to dy dx is equal to 8x to the power of 3. So I'll give two more examples and work through some odd cases in the process. And actually I'm going to do an example from economics, which brings us to a good point, because it's important to note that whilst I've articulated these rules in terms of the variables x and y, the rules apply to functions of other variables. So instance, in economics, we have a total cost function which relates 
the total cost TC to the amount produced Q. Marginal cost, which is really important in economics, is defined as the derivative of the total cost function with respect to quantity or Q, so DTC DQ. If you're not up to this in your course yet, or if you're not a student of economics, don't worry. It's just an example of taking the derivative where our variables are not X and Y. So as an example, if we had the total cost function, TC is equal to 40 plus 3Q. If I wanted to know marginal cost, I would take the derivative of this function with respect to Q. Our first term here, 40, is a constant, so the derivative is zero. And actually, I'm not going to write it here. I'm just going to ignore it. The second term is interesting because I have the term 3q where my variable doesn't have an exponent. But a variable without an exponent is just implicitly to the power of 1. So for the term 3q, we can think about it as 3q to the power of 1. The derivative would then be 1, which is like our n, out the front times 3, which is our a, times q, which is our variable, and then to the power of 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. Now I'll link to another video on exponents, but what's important here is that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. The rule is often articulated as a to the power of zero is equal to one and a can be anything, any number or any variable. So this whole term, this whole derivative comes out as three times one, which is just equal to three. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's look at another cost function. TC is equal to 3Q to the power of 2 plus 2Q plus 44. Well, marginal cost is just the derivative of this function with respect to Q. For that first term, I can take 2 out the front. That multiplies 3. And I take 1 off the exponent. Plus 2Q is implicitly 2Q to the power of 1. So 1 comes out the front, 1 times 2 times q, and then 1 minus 1. And then 44 just drops out because it's constant, so the derivative is 0. This all reduces down to 6q to the power of 1 plus 2q to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and q to the power of 1 can be written just as q, so we end up with 6q plus 2. And so that's it. In economics, at least, those rules are really going to help you out for a wide range, but not all functions. So I do hope that it helps. And at the least, it gives you a good start. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are doing well and see you next time.